Hey everyone and welcome to this new episode of Clinically Pressed. We are revisiting with Andy Asco. It was, uh, he was up north uh, from a couple weekends ago uh, for a couple things that were going on and so we had to follow up with him to just catch up, see what he's been up to. There's been a lot of transition going on in his life and career. Uh, both things are huge for him and we can't wait to see where it takes him but uh, we got the opportunity to sit down with him at the Greengrass Cafe in La Crosse, Wisconsin uh, and just chat about what he's been up to. Uh, great short episode uh, with some great insights as always from him so we hope you enjoy that. Um, as usual check out ParagonFN.com that's Paragon Fitness and Nutrition uh, for the best supplements that are out there. Some great things to help you sleep better to help you with just general daily feelings um, in terms of your body feeling good as well as uh, probably the best pre-workout we've seen on the market both for actually your workouts and also just for that uh, narrow focus that you might need in order to maximize what you're trying to do in a day um, at checkout use code cp15 for 15% off so be sure to check them out again hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you on the next one All right, everybody, welcome to this episode of Clinical Press. We're back. Um, we're Andy Asco, back up north, which is fantastic to have you back. Um, sitting here at, at Greengrass Cafe um, across Wisconsin, just hanging out. We had a little breakfast. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff going on today, but this whole thing should be a lot of fun. So uh, we were just going to catch up with Andy. We were just reliving how our first full interview is Andy as a powerlifter, the first time. Andy and I got to meet, um, and now as we sit here, Andy is no longer a powerlifter, a large weightlifter, and had his first competition, what, about a month ago? A couple weeks? Yeah, a month, I think. Time kind of runs together. Right. So we're just going to chat about how things have gone in the transition from powerlifting to weightlifting and being a full-time student on top of that, slash researcher, and yeah, just some of the cool stuff you've been up to. Well, spoiler alert, <laughs> there's not much time to train. <laughs> uh, I mean, grass movement just kind of takes the precedent by nature because grass is only a two year thing, and hopefully, this thing will be much longer than that. But yeah, you're a busy dude. <laughs> Don't tell my advisor that. <laughs> Joel's just uh, finishing his Bloody Mary. Yep. Enjoying. How has the transition been? I know a bunch of people are like, wait, what? Even around here are still like, why isn't he powerlifting anymore? And I basically gave him the rehash of what you told me about, you know, chasing an Olympic dream and just with your ability of, like, it's hard to teach your kind of strength, but also your kind of mobility, <laughs> especially being able to drop low to catch things and, you know, front squad plenty yeah. you know if you, if you can get, well, if you can get the clean up you know to catch it like there's no doubt you're going to be able to stand it up to at least get to the start of your jerk and it's like it makes sense and yeah uh it's it's going i mean i'm making progress pretty much every training session but for those of you who've ever tried to snatch your it's, uh, it's definitely a long-term process trying to Strength isn't really the issue, it's just real figuring out how to impose my will on the bar. That's the best way I've figured out how to say it. Had you done much Olympic lifting? Right. So when Jim White was here, was that before you? It was for me, yeah. I never actually met the guy, unfortunately. So there was a, a coach who used to bring out track. We just had to work together for like a couple weeks. And that was my first real intro, aside from high school football power cleans, which 
it's basically don't count. Yeah. <laughs> don't really do anything. But yeah, it's progressing. It's when I first started, I don't. I think back to even then and how far I've come now, and I still have quite a quite a long way to go. But I'm happy with how far I've gotten, especially given the circumstances. Of master degree. How often are you able to? Getting down and train, and how are you breaking that down? Do you still do like just strictly strength work on some days, and then a lot of more technique work, or how does that? What does a week look like? If in a in a perfect ish week, you know, which I know, I know a perfect week would be every day spending plenty of time, but obviously that's not always the case. But in a busy but still good training week, so. Um, Busy but good training week. I hope to get there four times. Usually ends up being more like three. Um, the strength work has taken a huge backseat. Luckily, it's pretty robust. Like it, it hasn't gone away really. Um, there was a lot of time swap for like two or three months. And we just had a photo shoot for marketing stuff for our gym. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're at like 325, which is like seven, 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 um, So it hasn't really gone anywhere. More just focusing on getting a good snatch of the working. My jerk is the best weightlifting movement that I have. I don't know if technically if that's true. Like, right. By far the strongest one. Um, I still like a 180 kilo, which is like 396 double, like two weeks ago. Um, but for a snatch and clean and jerk, snatch and clean, it's much more conservative. Um, but as far as how that's structured, uh, my coach Chris Laughlin, Blue Wave Fitness, handles all the programming. Generally, it looks like. We'll do like the full lifts one day. Usually they're together, so like clean and jerk and snatch, uh, snatch and clean and jerk. Um, are usually later in the week and they're a little bit heavier. But then the first couple days would be like power cleans, hand cleans, complexes, which are just things strung together, like one roll from the floor and then a pull from the hay with a full snare or something. Um, just trying to get comfortable in different positions. So these repetitions? Quality, quality yeah, repetitions? Quality repetitions. Trying to, especially with kind of the lack of recovery I want to do, um, trying to manage good work with good recovery, manage expectations is the biggest thing that we focus on with outside of training. So you said video feedback? Yeah, it's no, video to him for feedback? I train at Oh, you do? So he's there to kind of... Oh, nice. Yeah, he runs a pretty fast setup. It's like a... It's a 24-7 access, but he's there usually from like 10 or 11 a.m. to like 5, 6, or 7 p.m. All Monday through Friday. Um, and you can just drop by whenever you want to. He'll coach you up. And he's got two different kind of groups. He's got the weightlifters, and our team's pretty big and badass. Um, we actually have a couple people going to nationals in a couple weeks. And, uh, it? Are you going to that? No, I'm going to American Open. Okay. I knew you had made it qualified for another meet. I was just going to remember which one. AOs, finals, December. Um, but we have two groups. We have the weightlifters, which we have a pretty good team. Uh, Texas State champions this year, men and women's. And then we have, he also has like strength and conditioning, which is just like general fitness. People come in. Kind of, it's kind of like CrossFit without the name. Mm -hmm. He just he's a gymnast and a weightlifter by background, so he incorporates a lot of gymnastics and the combination. Yeah, it's perfect for me. Right. The mobility and kind of the. I want to see you do the walking handstands rather than. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Luckily, he doesn't impose it that hard. Gotcha. <laughs> he doesn't. He makes me do a lot of the mobility and stability stuff, but. For sure. Do you see results with that? Do you feel like that's really helped 
Uh, I do. Because yeah, if I remember, there was a chiropractor that would always try and work on your mobility and your lack of any kind of internal rotation. <laughs> Mostly yeah. internal rotation. I think that was <laughs> right. Really, yeah. all that was like. We haven't worked on that really. Um, more you haven't needed it. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. How's the For shoulders? Years. How's that been? Because I know you were struggling. So with the overhead stuff with some impingement things. And I'm, I'm still not sure what it is. I'll probably stop by, like, figure it out. But it, so we ended up doing um, a medicinal intervention leading into my meat because it, it flared up. Mm -hmm. And that seemed to have taken it away pretty well. And then it didn't resurface until literally, I think it was last Thursday, I was telling Chris, I'm like, it's really weird. It just kind of went away and didn't come back. And then that day, it came back. But I mean, it, it never has gotten any worse. Um, it's never gotten to the point where I'm weak. It's just there. Right. And then it's just really what it is. But upper body mobility is coming along. I used to uh, lose a front rack when I catch all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'd catch it with like one hand down. You know, you guys can't see doing audio but um, yeah. and that hasn't happened for months I don't have elbow or wrist pain like I did when I first started nice that was always my beef with any kind of those is my wrists would just die we have Mr. Shattered Red yeah, well that doesn't or... help it but even my <laughs> even my right one would hurt when we would do it and hence my aversion yeah. so what have you done for yeah. the wrist mobility and uh, I'll so, see. most of my mobility in this is kind of what I did for powerlifting is more just doing the movements. And then by nature, you either become more mobile or you get hurt. Generally, you don't get hurt, right? Unless you're just trying to load up a movement that's not very um, well patterned yet. So, a lot of that, the wrist and shoulder stuff came from just catching cleans more often, but Chris also had uh, kind of a gymnastic wrist routine he had us do to strengthen the wrist and help more with the wrist pain and that probably then allowed me to push it a little bit further. I can imagine that would be solid. Still what to at some point down the line look at that gymnastics bodies mm -hmm. level one or whatnot, split it amongst a couple people. I think it'd be interesting. Let's see what that all entails. Yeah, I'm super into gymnastics now. I think that's going to be my next offshoot. Muscle ups and all yeah. that good stuff. Also, an Olympic dream there. So. <laughs> yeah. I think that one's a little more realistic for me. Yeah, definitely. I really have the body style for that. Me too. I think I can get into like a, a 45 a or a 90 degree angle split. And that's about it. Yeah. Where you can make 90 degrees and then you there's long ways from 180. <laughs> so what do you say is your weakest if the jerk is your strongest? Probably the snatch. Um, I feel like I've gotten to be a little bit more aggressive with my cleans and I'm able to push those a little bit more with the snatch. It's just really taking, a, taking time. It's the more technical of the lifts that I feel. So that makes sense. It's just it's a weird thing trying to impose force to a barbell that you have a really wide grip on and then extend upward but not forward and get underneath. And, and Is that a typical like weakness for people of the of the list? Like is the snatch typically the the one to come last? Uh, just from what I hear, from what I, yeah, I feel like it's, that's the case. Um, so much so that, like, if you learn to snatch, you're probably going to have a relatively good carry over the clean because it's a different motion, but it's similar. Other than that, like, you extend, you pull under in the snatch, you kind of you get it into the hip more, so you can kind of feel that extension a little bit more. If you just think about it, if you have a wide grip, you're going to be able to get a lot higher. And accelerate it a little bit better versus the clean you're going to accelerate off the top of your thighs. Um, so it really gives you, at least for me when I first started, uh, gave me kind of a paradigm in which to think about extending the bar um, and what it should feel like in an ideal world. You know, the clean's never going to kind of match that, um, that perceptual information that you get. My word, my word has always been too bad that I can't, I never feel comfortable with the barbell 
Or uh, like, it just feels awkward. Yeah. Because when I first started, it was pretty. Wrists and hands, it seems. I just can't figure out where that comfortable spot is. The wrists for me were the worst because in powerlifting, like, you're always taught to keep mm -hmm. that straight wrist, whereas when you catch overhead, it's very flex. And that was a hard one for me, especially with, like, the painful wrists. So, really just so to you know, once I did. That turnover that's the best. I'm not trying to balance it. Right. That makes sense. So your meat must have gone well. Relatively. Yeah. I mean, for where I am, I'm happy with it. Um, I really get to train much more into it. So I to come out and do this one day. Do okay. I was happy with it. I qualified for which will be hopefully my next meet. That's what I'm going to do. Well, you and you're shooting for 20. Four, four, hopefully. Twenty twenty four. That's that's the big one. I don't think I'll be ready for tomorrow. Okay, I was. Uh, I just saw it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll Get some time. Did you mix in that in any powerlifting stuff in the middle of that just to like, keep things fun and interesting, or with just your school plan? Do you think you got to that? Yeah. This is a six year plan of yeah. development. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have asked me, like, well, don't train with the I think especially with the shoulders. Yeah. Makes sense. I did what I need to do in my life to come out. What I did to work out. Right. Uh, you see, uh, with your training between now and December, are you going to notice any increase in frequency or is it not lighting up for you over the summer? I'm hoping, I know you're meeting. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm, I'm not going to do anything in Texas for the next three months after yesterday. Um, I'm hoping, we're gonna, I'm going to be busy this summer. I'm going to be busy this summer. I'm going to be Processing. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I'm hoping that you know we're busy. That that's not like, time dependent. As in, it's not people coming in to do mm, things right. of nature. So I can schedule it as I need to schedule it. Then Dr. Andre basically have like a six-hour when he would run up, yeah. and like to a timer, so you could go and fit in your training in between. You yeah. had to pay attention to it again, or. I guess that was something probably different with what he was doing. Uh, though, yeah. Oh, I think it's essentially the same thing, but these guys are not staying like Nick still runs. They're like, there's like a new girl a little bit. Okay. Uh, so just, he's optimized the other version, the older version that takes him longer. Gotcha. Re optimizing things takes him months and months and months. He can't do that for a while. So he just sticks with the older version and I think. Jeez. The patience of a researcher. Uh. It's going to be super fun. So, as we're kind of winding down on this one a little bit, but you kind of reference the lab. Has anything that you picked up in grad school helped you? At all, just in terms of like I, you had a good knowledge base going into it. I mean, you were more scientific than most people, you know, when you're thinking of the programs that you had set up and you know the reasons behind it. But has anything come up in your time? There, this is at the end of year one, right? Yeah. Year one. Um, I think my big takeaway there, I would feel like since I, I've gotten to DC, there's been two kind of major takeaways. I don't know I'm less than the other one, it's not physiology. Mm -hmm. But the first one is more physiological the basis of like, power production, particularly research revolves in. So power is just like force over time. Yep. You want to create force. Like, good amount of force in a short amount of time. Um, without getting you know, too fancy, uh, I think when I went down there, I was I was a big strength 
is the yeah. answer for the rat. Mm -hmm. Force production side of things. And obviously biased by lifting background. Makes sense. Because um, we talked about how they're almost like backwards in terms of what they're called. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when you really think about it. Yeah. Force lifting will be a better name. Right. Um, I think I've, I've spent a lot of time kind of researching the idea of different, like essentially different loading schemes for optimizing power output. And from what I can tell, and from what the research says, I think there's it depends is kind of the answer, and it's a cop out because that's the answer to everything. I know, but I love that answer. Um, started watching some more. Not to interrupt, Stu McGill, the back pro guy, and just. Even people talking about him and how they'll steal his thing is people ask me a question. Is number one is well, it depends because yeah. it's not a one size fits all, which I just always find refreshing. That it's not well, this is the only way. Yeah. Yeah. So, actually, funny enough, squatting uh, a house or two. Right. I think it's a um, but what I was saying with the so power production very brief because I know we have to get to Jordan recently. Um, like the idea of I used to think heavy, 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 the stronger you are, the better I used to say strength is sport specific. Mm -hmm. um, Hey, I hate specific. Right. But, That's another conversation for yeah. another day. Um, but I do think that that might be the case uh, with weak people. So people, if you get an athlete, they in there. Basically no training yeah. age at all. Um, I actually, most strength coaches I talk to, um, when they receive an athlete, uh, in the collegiate setting, when mm -hmm. they receive an athlete, they consider zero training age. Makes sense. You can't be sure what they did. Right. Um, but so, strength training might be a little bit more beneficial for somebody who doesn't have a strength base. But the big takeaway was the idea of there are other options for those who do have, I guess, for lack of a better term, essential level of strength. Mm -hmm. um, in that velocity based training is probably a good um, mediator of training stimulus as far as either giving biofeedback as some sort of like gym wear has an option to give biofeedback. Um, so using some LPT or bar tracker to actually track the quantitative velocity, which I think is more ideal. But then something as simple as um, some Dr. Oliver's research has shown cluster sets are probably better for the power output um, than traditional set configurations. Um, basically, sports specific. So, <laughs> The idea that if you're moving faster at training, it's probably training you to move faster. Right. Um, you move better with the lighter loads. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can paradigm it in many different ways in terms of velocity specificity, load specificity, or anything. Um, basically, that nothing is any use. Right? Since I got down there, I was a know it all. I learned. <laughs> Nothing, because I learned that I know nothing. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep, totally does. I think that's I know a big a lot thing. Less now than not down there. Right. Know what you know, know what you don't know, and figure it out from there. Cool. Anything else on this one? I think we got another. Yeah, we got another full one later. Just everybody getting together and that's that'll be fun. All right. Well, good to see you, sir. Thank you, Green Grass, for the hospitality. Uh, we appreciate it. And catch everybody on the next episode. On to the next one. <laughs>
While you're there, you have access to all of our episodes, insights, and shorts. You can find Clinically Pressed on YouTube and any podcast outlet. If you could give us a rating, thumbs up, or review on how we are doing, we would greatly appreciate it. To get more free content delivered to your inbox, sign up for the Total Athletic Therapy newsletter. You'll get direct links to all new Clinically Pressed episodes, reviews on some of the latest research in health and performance, and links to related podcasts and other items meant to help you make the complicated simple and optimize performance. Thank you for listening and see you next episode.